Boring is realizing that most men's first intimate experience was really SA. Ask them how old she was. I'm not sure if you guys have seen this thread on Facebook, but when I tell you the comments are so sad. I was about seven to eight -ish. She was my older cousin, 15, 16, non-blood related. She used to isolate me when we would have the family get togethers, barbecues and whatnot, take me in rooms by myself. And one day I became aware of what was actually happening and I threatened to tell and she told me nobody would believe me. And she would just say I was lying because she was older. They would believe her. I never said anything. I was 12 and she was around 24 to 25. She was my mom's friend and my babysitter. And unfortunately my mother was incarcerated at the time. I originally gave consent because I was trying to be grown like my older cousins, but in the midst of the act, I began to feel really uncomfortable and asked her, could we stop? She stopped and begged me not to tell anyone because she could go to jail. I didn't say anything until years later. By that time, she had passed away. It wasn't, I became, it wasn't until I became an adult myself that I fully realized how wrong it was and how much it had an effect on my life. It made me extremely promiscuous at a very young age. I won't completely blame it on her because I took accountability, but I acknowledge that she played a huge role in that. And yes, this is a public thread. These are people putting these comments out publicly so anyone can see no private information was disclosed unwillingly. But this post is really just to show us that childhood trauma does affect us later in our adulthood. Yeah, look, we've spoken about this before on the channel. I've spoken about my experience. I think I was about seven. Okay, she was about 14 or 15. It wasn't traumatic for me personally. Looking at my life now, has it had an effect I don't know, but I know for a lot of guys that isn't the case. So if you guys want to share your experience down in the comments, let me know because this is way more common than people would like to believe. I put makeup on just for this date, so it better go well. And I'm not posting this probably if it doesn't. It did not go well. Truthfully, it lasted less than two minutes. I walked up, he gave me a hug and said, are you hungry? Let's go inside. We went inside. He said, actually, can you step outside for a minute? And I stepped back outside and he said, I'm not trying to offend you, but I'm just not feeling it. So I walked to my car, came back home. Dating when you're fat sucks. DDG definitely trap Hallie with that baby. And here's a little TikTok creator fun. CPMs is not that high for y'all to be sitting on here talking for two minutes about me. You got two kids. I, little, I looked on your Instagram. I looked on your TikTok, everything. You got two kids with no baby daddy. But you worry about me. Don't make sense to me. Y'all need to stop, bro. I'll be seeing what y'all be saying. Y'all be thinking I don't be seeing, but I'll be seeing this like, bro. I'm a father. I have, I'm in my child's life. Worry about your baby dad. We know this already, right? A lot of these women that be talking about relationships on TikTok, theirs are in shambles. A lot of them are single moms. A lot of them have no relationships with men in general. And like I said before, is that an ad hominem attack? Yes, because sometimes, sometimes they are valid. And for me personally, when it comes to relationships, if you're gonna be speaking on them or advising people, you better have a damn good track record yourself. Three Bibles in my house. I do pray every day. There is no crossover from Christianity to own. But he's not chat. told Hello. me or give me any sign that I shouldn't do it. You come to God as you are and his love cleans you up. So if you are following all the other scriptures, you couldn't possibly do it. I don't even listen to no. secular music. Oh. You. This girl here is sitting in front of me and has the audacity to talk about praying. And she has the bath for her yeah. met is that, is, <laughs> on can her I that again? <laughs> I go to church every Sunday morning. My ah, priest fair. absolutely God, loves me. Have I you showed in the bathroom, mate? My priest said that is just ink on your skin. Did he tell you to stop doing all? No. It's no. falling from grace. <laughs> the priest just wants more people in his congregation. Okay, because there's no way. But it's this weird thing. And it's unfortunate because you only see this among so-called Christians. They will talk about God whilst actively, willingly, and knowingly sinning. Like they know, ex they know exactly what they're doing. She has a whole bath of it on her leg in church. 
How unserious can you be? Next round, I am gonna have you ask the remaining ladies a question just to sure. see, you know, who's more your type. Uh, so what is your practice in religion? Like is it astronomy, the universe, Christianity, Muslim? What's your, uh, you know, religion? Okay, let's start here with your name and age. I'm Tiana, I'm 26 and I'm a Christian. Okay, nice. Right here. My name is Brittany, I'm 28 and I'm also a Christian, but I'm on a journey right now. Gotcha. Let's go over here, name and age, and answer this question. Angelique, 32, I'm a Christian. Gotcha. Right over here, your name and age, and what is your religion? Shiloh, 27, I believe in God, but I don't really bond with like a specific religion yet. Gotcha. Here, your name and age, and what's your religion? Tyra, 31, I'm Christian. And oh, name and age, and answer to his question. Hi, I'm Mercedes. I'm 26. Actually, I'm 27. Sorry. Okay. And <laughs> I am spiritual, but I don't follow a certain religion. Gotcha. Okay. Nice. Now, what about for yourself? What's yours? I am a Christian. Okay. Okay. So. So, no, you had a lot of questions in this lineup. <laughs> All right. So. <laughs> All right. Oh, oh, he's already ready. He knows. Okay, go ahead. Pop two. All right. Uh-huh. All right. No. <laughs> <laughs> all right let's start down here so i know you just said you're a christian yeah is that part of the reason you end up popping her yeah definitely okay definitely. so you know i just want to you know raise a christian household so i just want to make sure my wife is similar so understandable yeah all right so why did you have your balloon unpopped for him um he seems like he's very calm and that's what i'm definitely looking for and he's very attractive oh, thank you. appreciate thank that you. thank you and then we popped one over here. So why did we end up popping hers? I don't want to convert nobody. You know, if you <laughs> you are who you are, you know, I mean, I, it's not that I don't want to convert nobody because I want everybody to follow Jesus. But, you know, I'm not trying to, you know, be unequally yoked. So, yeah. I completely understand that because I was I grew up Muslim and my okay. mother's Christian. So I, I know both sides. Oh, yeah. And right now I'm on my journey because gotcha. I'm reading the Bible trying to like. And I don't like people to tell me what to do. I want to follow it myself. So I understand. Gotcha. And I respect it. Gotcha. And so why did you have your balloon unpopped? Well, he's definitely my type. My exes look like him. So. Oh. <laughs> All right. Well, let's line up everybody. Let's him back. Yes. <laughs> Uh, but yeah. yeah i'm not gonna lie if i was him i would have popped the second girl's balloon as well because i was hearing some shakiness in her voice it didn't seem like she was confident okay but this is the perfect example of something that i'll be talking about he was attracted to every woman in this lineup but when he popped the balloons i guarantee he wasn't taking attraction into account. Once he realized, okay, I'm attracted to all these women. He wasn't going, huh, which one's more attractive? Maybe I'll change my morals based on the baddest one. I don't know. They passed. They all passed the baseline of attraction. Now it becomes about different things. And to him, it was about religion. And this is what I'll be talking about. This is what I think more men should do. Once a woman passes the baseline of attractiveness for you, whatever that is, look should no longer matter. It should all be about who they are as a person. Is who they are as a person compatible with who you are as a person? But too many times, men will get into a situation and they'll go, okay, oh, damn, they're all attractive. But who's the most attractive? That's where people start getting messed up. And that's where men be getting into relationships with women they know damn well they shouldn't be with. Just because she's bad. You broke up with a man. And he did not fight to get you back. He hit you with the okay. <laughs> he was not outside your house, baby. He didn't give you no type of tussle or nothing. Now your chest is hurting. Hi, my name is Tasia. I'm a confidence and dating coach. And I teach women how to control their emotions so that their emotions don't control them. Stink. Oh, stink. Bring it in, baby. <laughs> Bring it in. Okay. Men process emotions so much differently and slower than women, okay? So always remember, women cry first, men cry longer. Women cry first, men cry longer. So if you're asking, is he thinking about me? Was this even real? Did he ever really want to be with me? Yes, he actually probably is thinking about you. Yes, it probably was real. And y'all, you know, he the man does care about you. Give him time to process his emotions, right? Now, what you don't want to do is start ping-ponging and going back on your word and your decision. This is why I told y'all stop doing that shit. 
Stop trying to break up with a man thinking that, that that's going to bait him so you can see how he really feel about you. Stop doing that shit. Stop. 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 It never works. You're going to end up, baby, with your chest caved in because now he hit you with the, okay, cool. I'm good, love, enjoy. Yeah, stop. Stop doing that. Stop doing that. He probably does care about you. Give him a little time. In the meantime, in between time, stand on business. There are certain things that I just don't get. If you break up with someone, why would you even care? You've broken up with them. Why do you want them to chase after you? Why do you want them to beg for you? You've ended the relationship. What is that about? Is that a mental is that a mental illness? So you break up with someone and you want them to chase after you so that you can reject them again? Because you've broken up with them, right? You don't want them. A billionaire's wife has an affair with a male stripper, and this most shameful of cuckoldry inevitably falls on the head of the NBA's nicest guy. Since becoming a couple with Amy in 1994, Duncan has given her nothing but undivided love. One reason Duncan waited until after college to enter the NBA draft was to honor his mother's wishes, and also to spend his college years alongside his girlfriend. Even after entering the glamorous NBA, Duncan remained a hopeless romantic. In 2000, the Orlando Magic tried everything to recruit Duncan. But because Coach Rivers prohibited players from bringing girlfriends on the team plane, Duncan chose to forego a six-year, $68 million mega contract to stay with the more compassionate Spurs. A year later, Duncan and Amy officially got married. Amy didn't want to idle at home like other NBA wives. Duncan, supporting her, not only helped her return to her medical career, but also established a medical foundation and entrusted its management to Amy. Little did he know that this substantial fund would become the catalyst for their divorce. In 2012, Duncan suddenly realized something was off with his wife. Every time he came back from an away game and sought affection from his wife, she would make excuses to refuse. Initially, Duncan thought his wife was just tired, but as large amounts of money from the foundation started to go missing, he realized something was amiss. It was only after a private investigator's investigation that the truth came to light. His wife not only had an affair with a male stripper, but also took out millions of dollars to help him start a business. Duncan wanted to handle it discreetly at first, but who would have thought his wife would turn against him for her lover? Amy not only initiated the divorce, but also slandered Duncan as bisexual. Although Duncan might seem slow, he's actually very smart. He collected evidence, won the lawsuit, and even gained custody of their two children. After a seven-year courtship and 12 years of marriage, Duncan might not forgive, but he still gave Amy $7 million. As a man, he has done more than enough, but the wicked often bring trouble upon themselves. After the divorce, Amy was duped by her lover into opening a gym. However, within two years, the gym went bankrupt and the lover left her. Amy ended up with nothing, both personally and financially. On the other hand, Duncan, the fool, found happiness. After the divorce, he fell in love with Vanessa, an American reality TV star. She not only surpasses Amy in looks and social status, but also deeply respects Duncan's hobbies. Duncan also learned from his previous marriage, paying more attention to his personal image, no longer just going out in shorts and a t-shirt. He even started sporting trendy dreadlocks at the age of 47. Duncan's love life teaches us that enduring loneliness is a discipline in marriage, and loyalty is a choice. Just look at him and Vanessa now. You'll see that only mutually supportive partners can make each other sh Yeah, so... Tim Duncan never came across as slow to me, just quiet. That's number one. I don't know why they call him a fool. I I, I don't I don't know why this. Listen, anyways, they clearly use AI to make this. Um, there's tons of articles going around talking about the story. People that cheat and then get into a relationship with the person they cheated with, they always think it's gonna work, and that the foundation of your relationship started on. BS. You're building a BS foundation. The fact that she got duped by her lover, who is that surprising to? No one, except for her. You divorced a multi-millionaire, possibly a billionaire. You lost custody of your kids. The man that you divorced that millionaire for finessed you and left you. And the billionaire that you divorced goes and finds a better partner. At that point, you have literally lost that life. There's no coming back from that. And also, Tim Duncan didn't give her seven million. She got a settlement of seven million. Very different. This is what it looks like when a parent walks up to the outside of a baby box, uh, opens the door, places the newborn inside the medical bassinet, takes the orange bag, shuts the door, and walks away. This child is picked up from this baby box within two minutes. Oh, all right. I don't think I'm going to get over. 
Shouts out to everybody from Alabama, okay? But why is it that eight out of 10 times I see some BS going on in America? It's in Alabama. What's that about? What is that about? Now, look, the invention, I'm not even upset about. Because if it wasn't for the invention, these demons would probably be putting their kids in garbage bins. Who, who, who knows what these people would be doing? But the fact that this is even a thing is so disturbing. Is Alabama a state where abortion is banned? Because that would kind of make sense. But you know what's also so interesting? When you look at the comments under this post, it's women praising it. Oh my God, yes, we can do this, blah, 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 blah. But when men are banning their kids, they get demonized. I've, again, very, very interesting. Because with me, I keep it consistent. Men who are banning their kids, I will get onto them. And women who abandon their kids, I will also get onto them. Because you shouldn't be abandoning your kids. This is not something that should be praised. This is very unfortunate. Women have the final say. Because realistically, yeah. I always say right now, if I get pregnant for someone that I am not married to, yeah. father forgive me, but we know what I want. Because I'm not having another kid. But if you have it, that means you wanted it. No, absolutely. And then, and, and so... Can I ask you a question? Wait, wait, if women can have an abortion is... based upon that, yeah, and they don't care about men's feelings, yeah, don't you think men should be able to have a financial abortion? Hold on a second. If you can do... Well, hold on a second. If I want a child, if I get you pregnant and I want a child and you don't want a child based upon whatever in your life, you just said you're going to do what you have to go and do, yeah? yeah. Abort the mission, yeah? I, you, I didn't say what, abort the mission. I you, said I'm going to... We're going to talk to You're God, going yeah. to abort the mission, okay? <laughs> but guess what? Yeah. You don't care about my feelings. You don't care that I may have wanted to be a father. You mm. don't care, innit, yeah? yeah? So you abort the mission, cool, innit, yeah? yeah? But then, let's say I don't want the child and you want the child, if, yeah? You know hold on a second. Wait, hold on a second. Hold on a second. If you don't want the child, should you be allowed to Step no, back no, no, no. I'm saying something. I'm showing the hypocrite. I'm saying, well, there's a lot of men, yeah. I may have wanted a child. You don't know. Mm -hmm. I may have had a child with a girl and she may have got pregnant. I may have wanted it. I'm not saying she, I wanted it, but it could have happened, right? Mm -hmm. And she could have um, aborted that child, had no say in it. Mm -hmm. So therefore, don't you think that men should be able to have financial abortion? If a woman has the right to choose, my mm -hmm. body, my choice, don't you think the man should be my wallet, my choice? So, okay, cool. Maturing as a man is understanding the perspective of a lot of these deadbeat dads. Now that doesn't mean that we respect them or we have any use for them. We just understand that the majority of those men never wanted to have kids. And they told these women, hey, you have this kid, I'm out. Well, the women had it anyway. And this is where accountability comes into play. When we speak about single motherhood and we speak about accountability, a lot of women think that we're placing all the blame on them. It's not all on them, but there is blame on them because you could have just picked someone who wanted a kid. You could have picked better. You knew he wasn't better. You knew he wasn't good. You knew he was a piece of shit, but you picked him anyway. Even after he told you he didn't want to have a kid with you. Perfect. I've had this conversation with someone before. She had a child, the guy told her from the jump, I don't want this kid. If you keep this kid, I'm not going to be involved. She decided to keep the kid. When the child was born, he maintained. He has stood 10 toes on what he said. And I have said to her, whilst I still think he's a waste man. Because, Why? because that's his blood. Aside from her, that's your bloodline. Yeah. Aside from however you feel about your baby mom, it will never change the fact that that's your bloodline. So that's fine. I still agree that he said from the beginning that's you what do you really, want. There's a certain but amount, that doesn't take away the fact you, that you do I still realize, feel like he's There's waste. a certain amount of um, attachment that men get to women. To based, the baby. Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah, I, want you yeah. Guys, I want you guys to understand, like, st stop putting semen and bust and you're trying to think that means something. A man mm. bust inside of you, he does not attach that to the child. To the child okay? Yeah. I want you to understand this. Now, traditionally, having a child outside of wedlock, they would have called you a whore, they would call those kids bastards. This is what it is and mm. this, is what, this is what it's still called now. Yeah, that's, what, that's what I grew up to, right? Okay, cool. So what we're doing right now is we're calling people bay moms and single mothers, but people could be saying a lot worse, but we're not doing that. What you want to do is this. I'll be honest with women. Marriage protects women, okay? Mm. Because you guys initiate divorce and, you know, you get most of everything. The, ch the kids go with you and, you know, suicide rates and men's depression, all these things, right? So if you want to be protected, mm. what women, women, you don't want child support. You want spousal support and alimony. The problem is you become baby moms, not you per, per se, but I'm saying they become baby... Having a child with someone is equal to being married to them. Mm. It's the same thing, okay? Mm. It's the exact same thing. In actual fact, it's you're connected it's straight away. Yeah. So if you're willing to give a man a child, you might as well secure the ring because if you decide to leave, at least now he has to pay for you. What you're doing is you're finessing yourself out of what was actually good. Now you're getting um, 
Child support. Child support don't mean nothing. That's a couple bills. That's not going to change your life. Exactly. And if your man is self-employed, oh, just forget about that. Yeah. Yeah. You, 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 I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So why I try to put onus on the woman is because I look at women. Women are the prize. Mm. Women have always been the prize. But you don't become the prize when you allow bear man to start unwrapping the prize and passing it around. I actually agree. And I think, look, I've said this before, dating is a game. Men and women have different objectives. Generally speaking, for a woman, if I'm advising my daughter, you should aim to get the most security, the most resources, the most commitment out of a man as possible before you start a family. So you want to be married, you want to live together, you want to have some bills together, you want to have a life set up together. And then you start procreating. Because as a woman, that puts you in a very comfortable situation. But as a baby mom, you ain't in no situation. This liquor got me in my zone. Now I'm blowing up your phone. Blowing weed smoke in the ozone. I just can't let this go. This liquor got me in my zone. Now I'm blowing up your phone. Smoking the old songs I just can't let this go Girl, if I'm doing too much Just let me know For some reason I just